speed kills. And in boxing, people say the faster fighter wins. But I think it's more accurate to say the first fighter wins. Even when fighting an opponent who's faster than you, understanding your vulnerabilities and their attack options can keep you a move ahead and make you first when you fight. Helping us with our lesson on lane theory today is gonna to be our strength conditioning coach and athlete, Antonio. Lane theory is the system that guides how you defend and attack from different head slots when standing in front of your opponent. Lots of new fighters paralyze themselves, fearing attacks of every punch of every type from every position. When in reality, from certain positions or head slots, there are only some punches that opponents can hit you with quickly and powerfully. There are 10 different head slots in boxing. There are five lanes, starting with your center lane, cross lane, open lane, jab lane, closed lane, and there are two levels, high and low. If you split this up, you have 10 head slots that your head could occupy. High open, high cross, high center, high jab, high close, low open, low cross, low center, low jab, low close. Accounting for distance, you can start making educated guesses on how your opponent may or is likely to attack you when occupying these head slots. So let's say you're in the high jab lane. If you're in the high jab lane at range, your opponent is likely gonna be throwing the one or the two. If you're in the high jab lane in range, in an exchange, your opponent is likely going to be throwing the five or the four. Your opponent could obviously throw other punches when you're in this position, but they would increase the risk and decrease the reward of throwing these. For example, in that high jab slot, your opponent could throw a three, but it would have a big tell on it as it came outside to give them room to accelerate. They wouldn't have a lot of space to accelerate and they're likely gonna be slapping with that punch instead of landing with their punching knuckles. And on top of that, it allows you inside of their defenses. In this particular case, it leaves them vulnerable to the four or the right hand. If I'm in the high head slot and at range, my opponent is most likely gonna be throwing the one or the two. So slipping is really my best option here. Straight punches come really fast, so it's tough for me to identify them as my opponent throws them. I decide to defend proactively. When I see my opponent do anything, I get out of the way, whether I'm slipping closed or I'm slipping open, and then I use my understanding of lane theory to defend the following punches and keep myself safe. This proactive defense allows me to get ahead of my attacking opponent. For example, if I slipped open and my opponent had thrown a jab, then I need to worry about rolling under their right hand as a follow-up shot. If I had slipped open and my opponent had thrown a cross, now I'm sitting in their jab lane and I'll need to defend either the jab or the five. When I have my athletes do the drill we'll be talking about shortly, I have them block. You can always duck it if it's a jab, but just in case, you should always layer in your defense so you don't run into an uppercut. If I slip closed and I recognize that my opponent threw a two, then I'm gonna roll to my open side to get under the potential three that might be coming my way. If I slipped closed and I recognize that my opponent threw a jab, then I need to throw that high guard up, maybe change levels to protect myself because now I'm in the cross lane and they may throw a two or a six as a follow-up punch. This is a drill I like to do with my boxers to get them thinking about defense positionally, where I tell them I'm only gonna throw straight punches at them. All they have to do is just decide to slip. They can slip left or they can slip right, but after this, they need to make an assessment on the follow-up punch. If they slip into a lane of attack, like my cross lane or my jab lane, I'm gonna throw my cross or my jab and they're gonna block. If they slip elbow side, I'm gonna throw my hook from the far side to encourage them to roll under that shot and create a breakaway moment or an opportunity to counter on a future opponent. Some other examples of lane theory include circling at distance to your right side so that your opponent can really only attack you with a jab and that's all you have to worry about defending. Putting your head in the high closed lane when you're in the middle distance or on the inside, trying to bait out your opponent's four so you can create an opportunity to drop across and attack their liver. 
or creating traffic while hanging out in the cross lane, trying to bait your opponent's right hand to use it as an exit off of the ropes. Obviously, this isn't comprehensive. There's lots more to discuss when we're talking about lane theory. I've been doing this for more than two decades, fighting and sparring, and I'm still discovering new ways to apply this concept. The big takeaways here are recognizing that most of your defense is going to be proactive, not reactive. It's about recognizing what you're vulnerable to from certain positions, not about identifying specific punches as they come at you. Start applying lane theory to your own training so you can see how valuable it is and you can start outsmarting and disarming your opponent when you fight. If I slip closed and I recognize that my opponent throw to two, throw to two. <laughs> they throw to two. They throw to two. <laughs>